The current war in Afghanistan, which started circa 2001 as Operation Enduring Freedom for the United States, still rages on today in an attempt to dismantle Al-Qaeda and the Taliban insurgency. In 2009, Colonel Olaf Holm began his one-year tour in Kabul, Afghanistan, training Afghan soldiers to fly MI-17 helicopters. His courage and dedication reflects tremendous credit on himself and the United States Air Force. My name is Colonel Olaf Holm. I'm the Commandant of the Air Advisor Academy. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, my year in Afghanistan which was in 2009, where I was a uh, MI-17 pilot, and that's a Russian helicopter pilot, for the Afghan Army Air Corps, and I was an advisor to the Afghan Army Air Corps leadership. And in addition to that, I was also the uh, deputy group commander for the 438th Air Expeditionary uh, Group in Kabul, Afghanistan. So uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but a big focus today will be about uh, my time uh, doing humanitarian efforts with uh, two organizations, uh, Global Roots, which a friend of mine started uh, back in Portland, Oregon, and then um, uh, Central Asian Institute, a institute that uh, was started up by Greg Mortensen, the author of Three Cups of Tea and the author of Stones to Schools. Most people, when they think of Afghanistan, they think about desert. They think about, uh, quite honestly, when I've talked to people around the country, they've, they've come up and said, what do you think of, when I ask them, what do you think of Afghanistan, they'll say desert, flat desert. They kind of equate it, unfortunately, to Iraq, uh, when uh, culturally and geographically it couldn't be much more different. When I was uh, returning from northern Afghanistan uh, to um, come back to Kabul, uh, and I took my camera and looked out the window, and it was over the Selang Pass. Um, which is a famous pass where the Russians had built a, a pass um, that was uh, drivable from northern Afghanistan through the Hindu Kush mountains. And it was absolutely gorgeous. I think you'll find that uh, you'll see from my pictures that Afghanistan is actually a very beautiful place. And, and uh, where I should have been flying, I was quite often taking pictures, and, uh, and I'd like to share them with you. So let's look at a little bit about the geography. Uh, looking at Afghanistan, it's actually about... 1,100 miles across. The southwest border goes towards Iran and Pakistan. The north, northeast, the, the far northeast corner is actually bordered on China. And then up to the north of, uh, of Afghanistan, you have several Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and then uh, again, you have Pakistan to the south. So a lot of people are really not too familiar with it. And if you look at, again, at the geography, you'll see right down the middle of Afghanistan is a large mountain chain and it separates northern Afghanistan from southern Afghanistan, and that's called the Hindu Kush. And uh, these mountains, 20,000 foot plus mountains, and, and valley floor in some places in, uh, up in northeast Afghanistan is actually 13,000 feet, the valley floor. So we're talking about big altitudes, we're talking about uh, arid places, we're talking about lush green uh, river valleys. It's, it really is a remarkably beautiful country. Where I was stationed was in Kabul. Uh, Kabul, Afghanistan is a large city. Uh, it's really difficult to track the, how many people actually live there, but ep estimates are under three to four million people. Uh, it goes up and down depending on the situation. And uh, Kabul, if you'll, if you'll notice from the picture, is a very, very densely populated. Uh, again, you'll look at the picture and you'll see the homes, and each of the homes have walls around them, and in the homes, in these walls, you'll see trees and gardens, and that's pretty much standard, not only in Kabul, but if you go to the smallest village, to the largest city of Kabul, it's a sort of the same format. And for a person on the ground, it gets very, very confusing when you're walking in the villages. So uh, it's like uh, walking in a maze. You can't see over the walls and you can't really see the next uh, street. So aviation becomes kind of important in this kind of envir environment to, to get around, uh, certainly with the mountains, but in the cities as well. We're going to switch now down towards southeast Afghanistan. We call this RC East. And uh, this area is a very violent area because it borders Pakistan and it's very, very rugged. And this is part of Asia. And it really shows where Afghanistan is a border between uh, towards the west and the east. And it looks very similar to what you would see anywhere in Asia. And it's terraced rice paddies or perhaps wheat fields. 
Uh, this particular place, though, is very dangerous. Uh, I got shot at quite a bit in my helicopter in this particular region because we're just a few miles from Pakistan, a very porous part of the border, and a lot of uh, uh, money and weapons flew or were uh, taken through this border area. Um, this next picture shows uh, an area where a large battle was fought. It's called the Whaleback, and um, it was uh, where uh, Osama bin Laden had made his escape in 2002, uh, right into Pakistan, we believe. And it was a huge battle, and, and I flew across it just about every day. But right in the middle of this desert, in this next picture, it shows a green area. And this is a, a large river called the Helmand Valley, the Helmand River. And you may have heard about this because there's a lot of fighting. The reason there's a lot of fighting is because there's money. There's money because they grow heroin, a poppy, in this particular region. And uh, the Taliban have used the sale of heroin to, to buy weapons and to gain power. Uh, if you also notice from this picture I'm at rather high altitude where I'm most of the time when I'm flying I'm at high altitude because I guarantee you if we come down in altitude we're going to start getting uh, uh, hailed with bullets. <laughs> kind of a hard area. In fact this picture was taken when we were uh, in 2000, February of 2011 and March of 2000, I'm sorry, 2010. Uh, on the Battle of Helmand, it was called. We swept through U.S. Marines and British forces, swept through the Helmand Valley, and uh, just completely taking over the entire area. And I was one of the pilots for the Afghan Army to do to support that. Uh, my mission, uh, I, I was over there in Afghanistan. My primary function was an advisor, and uh, but I had those other roles, uh, which include being an MI-17, which is a Russian pilot, Russian helicopter pilot. Excuse me. This Russian helicopter was a real strange thing for me to fly. But in addition to uh, being a MI-17 pilot, which what I thought I would be doing would be flying and teaching people how to fly a helicopter. Out. But my primary function was working with senior leaders in the Afghan Air Force. Uh, and then it was called the Afghan Army Air Corps. Um, but primarily I want to talk about the two gentlemen I work with on a daily basis. And those are General Barat and General Asadullah. General Asadullah in the upper left corner is a, a MiG-21 pilot trained in the Soviet Union that believes in the Soviet system. He uh, lived in the Soviet Union for several years and then he was trained up to be a MiG-21 pilot which is a fighter jet uh, and moved back to Afghanistan and fought for Afghanistan, fought for communist Afghanistan. General Barat, uh, if you notice, he has a beard which tells you something if you are familiar with the culture that he's probably a little more traditional and then probably more likely to be Pashto. Uh, General Barat was a helicopter pilot uh, and he was trained by the Soviets but he broke away he got his skills and started fighting for the Mujahideen. General Barat was General Asadullah's boss. Okay, General Asadullah was the group commander, General Barat was the Kabul wing commander. Generally in Air Force systems, in any kind of system, you have conflict between leadership and that's just Americans that are from different parts of the states or just have different values and different systems. Here we have a situation where we have two different cultures. General Asadullah, who was Tajik, born and raised in Kabul of modern, and, and then you've got General Barat, who is a traditional Pashto Wardak province. They are, they've been fighting for generations, these two, uh, Tajik and the, and the Pashto. On top of that, one of them fought for the Soviets, the other fought for the Mujahideen, so they literally fought against each other. Now they've come together at this new administration and now they're on the same team. It was my job to get them to work together. I'm a combat search and rescue helicopter pilot. This, this next picture shows um, part of what I do. Um, uh, as combat search and rescue and in, in the Army I flew medevac helicopters. It, it shows, this picture shows two things. It shows a picture on the left of a soldier that has been wounded and is being re uh, treated and there's a shows a picture on the right of a coffin of an Afghan soldier in the back of my helicopter that's uh, been killed. They called them you know, martyrs. But what I found out was that in Afghanistan the number one priority mission was not life uh, going out and saving lives. It was returning dead bodies back to their families. And this was a very difficult thing for me to accept. That is not right. You cannot do that. Human life becomes more important than returning the dead. You, you are wrong. Am I right or is he right?
Thank you. 